Good afternoon, uh, especially the ones who um, have managed to sort of take the uh, challenge of staying online for four hours versus mingling with us here. Um, uh, so first of all, thank you all for joining. It is, uh, I know there's over five, 600 registered so online. So I know travel is still an issue. Uh, but uh, for those of you here, we have a stellar cast of speakers. Um, if there's any questions on the web, obviously you can ask, but feel free to uh, you know, email us. Uh, all of us, our emails are on the web, and I think Pano can work that through the registration. Uh, but just to get started, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with LF networking, um, I'm Arpit Jashpura. I head up uh, open source networking and edge at the Linux Foundation. Um, and what I was going to do is give you an overview of uh, what the next big things are in the world of open source networking. And before we get started, for those of you who are new to Linux Foundation, um, I'm sure there is a lot more. Uh, some of you might already know this, but we are beyond Linux. We have, uh, we have sub-foundations that solve problems within uh, either a technology area or a market, right? So in the world of security, like OpenSSF, or networking, or cloud, or automotive, webs, energy, et cetera. And we have sub-foundations with projects that we host to create this open source community. And it has been very active and very well received um, over the last you know, 20 years of, of existence. So with that said, this uh, mini summit or webinar or uh, whatever you want to call it is part of the open source summit here in lovely Vancouver. And thanks to TELUS for keeping the weather good. Uh, so appreciate that. Um, what, I'm what I was going to cover is LF networking, which is one of the top three sub-foundations, largest sub-foundations inside the Linux Foundation, um, and what its mission is, what we're trying to do there, and in general, what we are seeing globally from the trends perspective. So the number one uh, feedback and the number one trend that we see is reaggregation is following disaggregation. Okay, uh, so everybody who is in networking will know what SDN is, right? Disaggregating hardware from software, disaggregating control plane from data plane, um, and then we kept on disaggregating all the way up the stack out to the edge and access. Now the RAN is going through the same disaggregation. Well, guess what? Someone's got to put it all together. So. Uh, you know, so you sprinkle it open, you put it all together, it's now back to reaggregation. So what does that mean? That means that if you need to build an end-to-end -end solution across the telecom service providers, cloud service providers, or enterprises, here's a potential way to do it, right? With a subset of projects that I'm showing here on the screen. Everything from ORAN to edge compute, uh, projects all the way into enterprise, into enterprise edge, so user edge and service provider edge, through some version of cloud, up the stack through a NOS, whether it's Sonic or Dent, into a data plane, uh, DPDK, FDIO, these are again projects, Kubernetes, up through the stack, control plane, uh, you know, open daylight, tungsten fabric, uh, Nephew, um, ONAP, and then all the way up through the applications, whether it's uh, CNFs or uh, BGP, uh, uh, eBPF lifecycle management projects like LEAF, right, which runs most of Walmart's um, life cycle, eBPF lifecycle management programs, right, uh, at scale. So there's, and then there's projects, every, every project in the middle. The key message here is these projects, they all work in their own TSC, and they work together in what is called um, a solution, right? So it's not just, you know, projects get developed on their own with software and, and, uh, and testing, and then we bring it together in something called, you know, 5G super blueprints. The other thing I want to emphasize on LF networking is five years ago, there was a fight between standards and open source, maybe seven years ago, I don't know. 
is standards the right way to do it, or is it open source the right way, right? And it was a competing alternative. We have solved that. And I'm pleased to report we have solved it completely with LLF's leadership where we have collaborations with pretty much all the standards organization, very specific MOUs. And the philosophy is very simple. If a standard exists, code it. If it doesn't exist, code it, and then upstream it to the standards. And people are doing it, okay? And everything from GSMA to Etsy to 3GPP, ORAN, NGM, and TMF, like every layer, every standard organization is working with the LF community and LFN particularly to do that. Not only that, we have other open source communities like CNCF, Magma, Edge, ORAN, right, that have come together to provide solutions and interoperability through working groups and, and things like that. And then when we move from the core to the edge of the network, uh, there are alliances and, and, and consortiums, consortiums that focus on specific industries like automotive or digital twin and things like that. So they, they work closely also with the open source community. So the good news, collaboration has increased. If you see, uh, if you see that this is a 100-year-old industry, right, telecommunications, and it was heavily regulated, heavily proprietary, heavy standard-based, and we have come a long way in the last five years, I should say, okay? And a lot of other industries are learning from us, right? Like the energy industry, okay? So formal collaborations, standard bodies, right? Consistent APIs, models, things like that. Uh, and there's a whole list of, you know, the etc salts that have been coded or the TMF APIs that have been coded, et cetera, okay? So with that said, what is the reaggregation looking like? The reaggregation is looking not just at the org and the open source level, but it also at the solutions level, right? So if you think of this kind of very simple diagram where you have the horizontal interoperability of platform, which is what we are calling 5G Super Blueprint, and the five use cases are very simple, right? Like on top, ultra low latency, enhanced mobile broadband, voice network, slicing, private networks, industry 4.0. Right? These level of use cases, macro, uh, they run on that black platform interrupt pipe, like this, this color here. And then on top, you can have vendor workloads, et cetera, et cetera, and consumed by the various industries. Right? So one of the focus areas for LFN this year is not just the blueprints in the, the middle blue, but also focus on network as a service, right? As, as the team's trying to figure out what it means, there's a white paper that came out, there was a demo showed at uh, Open Networking and Ed Summit, et cetera, et cetera. So 5G Super Blueprint, if you're not already participating, it's an open way to bring things together, right? And very important, and I think we'll have, uh, we'll have a talk at the end of the session on that as well. Now, who uses LFN Super Blueprint? Well, here's one example. I'm not giving you examples of the telcos that are dependent on it, but this is US government. Uh, DARPA is a project. They started a project called Ops 5G. O Ops stands for Open, Programmable, and Secure 5G. The US government, through their research, has already shown that open source is the only way to build secure software. So, Everybody says, why is open source more secure? Oh, more eyes look at it and all that, fine, right? Buy that. But how do you theoretically prove it? Well, they're proven it. So what that means is every future deployment in Navy or in, in, in Army or anywhere in the uh, warfare or civilian, right, is all going to be based on open source. And what open source? LFN. So here's an, here's a, here's an example that this slide was presented at the, at the I think, uh, keynote by Tejas at uh, the One Summit. He's the head of DARPA. And here's an example. They want to utilize all these projects, and on top of that, they will put their secret sauce. That is for these use cases. Okay? Now, the one thing I want to emphasize, and this is actually a very good learning for people who are new to open source, you can't just consume open source. Okay, I mean, you can, but that's not what people like. So you have to contribute back, because that is how open source works. Now, how do you contribute back? You either make the changes and put it back in upstream, or you participate in these TSCs and in these forums and, you know, for documentation or anything. So one example is uh, USC, which is one of U.S. government's research arm, 
uh, University of Southern California. Uh, Dr. Eric Klein has done research on how do you make the slices in network secure. Extremely amazing algorithms, right? Uh, because they want to make sure that a slice on a 5G network cannot be hacked, period, okay? So they did all this research, and then they realized that everybody can benefit on that. So they actually upstreamed that work into ONAP. Okay? So now the whole community benefits. This is an example of contributing back, pushing things in upstream, and everybody benefiting. Okay? So, uh, and of course, there's, there's more. Okay? So that's trend number one, okay? re-aggregation of open source components. The second trend is, uh, and I use this word, open sourceification of vertical industry. Okay? Uh, what that means is, if you have a set of projects, and doesn't matter where they are, right? Core, edge, access, like at the bottom, right? And does, okay, by the way, they don't have to be LFN projects, they don't have to be LF projects. It's just open source projects, right? They could be Apache, they could be open infra, they could be Eclipse, doesn't matter. But let's say these projects bring together some version of an open source uh, pie. How do you consume it? You consume it through either you are an enterprise or you are a service provider, and I'm calling service providers as both cloud and telecom, or you are an end user like a government, right? Very custom uh, specific. So what we do is we focus on these use cases that are important to each of these markets, and then each industry on the top is getting utility and utilizing some of these blueprints for their use case. And by the way, on the top, industrial, energy, commerce, retail, that's a linear order of industry on how they're consuming open source. So manufacturing, for example, is the hottest market for open source right now for edge computing. You know what the use case is? Predictive maintenance. That's it, right? And private lines, or sorry, private networks, which is the LFN use case, right? Energy, et cetera, et cetera. So again, keep in mind, these vertical markets are going after, uh, are, are dependent on a lot of the uh, work that is being done in open source. You know, there used to be time when they would just call a TELUS or a Bell or a, or, or, or anyone and say, hey, I need, I need a, an MPLS line, and then that's it, right? And they would be paid on the pipe, and then that's it. But these days, the, 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 the service providers partnering with the cloud service providers, so telecom plus cloud, working very, very closely with these industries so that they can add value-added uh, work and, and charge for them. And why is this happening? Because digital transformation, which is in the enterprise, uh, which is again, I know it's hard to read, but uh, on, the, on the top is like assets, usage, and labor, right? So this is attributes of digital transformation, and on the y-axis is really the industries, okay? ICT, media, finance, et cetera, et cetera, oil and gas, et cetera. So you can see that industries which have a lot more digital assets and that are relying a lot more on open source can do digital transformation faster than the others that don't. And in fact, for the very first time, we are starting to see agriculture, which is at the very bottom, coming up the pipe, right? So this slide will look different next time. Okay, so that's number two, right? Which is vertical industries are important. Number three, security is a top priority. Now, everybody will say that, but how do you do open source security in a very structured manner, right? And is CVEs just enough? And the answer is no, right? So what we have is we have some research studies done by Harvard and some of the other uh, uh, foundations, including our own research organization and OpenSSF, where everybody uses open source in some form, but only half of them use SBOMS. So SBOMS is software build of materials, right? So it's knowing where packages come from, okay? And so, Basically, the findings from all these research, right? Everybody tries to do research. I like, I, I, I love it, but then I just like to take what the research says and then push it into the community so that we can actually do something about it, right? Because otherwise, 
It just becomes a marketing tool. So what has happened is research is saying it's not just the CVEs, it's the entire life cycle. It's packaging, it's integration, and the top projects within each community better understand how to do security properly. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that you have to do six things. Okay, you have to secure, and this is at the LF level, but we have taken it down to the LF networking level, and we have said you have to secure the most important critical components, right? A GUI getting hacked with a very solid API that can't be penetrated is not as much of a risk as, you know, a BGP going down and the network getting taken out, right? So difference, so the secure, most critical components are, are important. Um, automated tooling is important. Um, you have to train people to get to that level. And then, of course, SBOMs. So how do we do that in LFN, right? So if you go today to the, the so the, first of all, there's, if you can't measure, you don't know how secure you are. So there is a tool called LFX Security. LFX is our platform, open source platform. That's the, LFX is the only tool that is available only to LF uh, projects, right? No other open source foundations have it. But it is a tool to give you insights into the developer community. Same way, it's, an ins it's a tool to give you insights into the security. So you can go to each of these projects, look at the dashboard, and how secure they are and where they are in the life cycle. So OpenSSF says, in order to be secure, here's a checklist of 150 things you need to do. And then each of these projects will go in and say, yes, I do this, I don't do this, I do this, here's a plan to do this, right? It's a lot of process work you need to clean up so that you eventually get to 100%. I think this one's showing open daylight, for example, one of the projects at 90%, right? So we're almost there, um, et cetera. So take a look at the dashboard, participate. If you're a security-focused individual, you know, please participate in the security subcommittees and things like that. But security is taken very seriously. Now, if you look at the Linux Foundation, we have the OpenSSF Foundation, sub-foundation, which gives you the framework of security. All the other sub-foundations have to implement those frameworks. And LF networking is leading the way. And the reason LF networking is leading the way is if there is no connectivity, nothing else matters. And that's what we focus on. So that's kind of why the community takes this very seriously. Okay? So that's number three, security. The next one is um, the merging of um, the markets, okay? Enterprise cloud and telecom are no longer working in isolation. I mean, we have Telus here. They're heavily working with the Googles of the world, for example, right? Or AWS or Microsoft. And these ghosts are working with the Deutsche Telekom. Telcos and, and telecoms are no longer competing. They're competing on a different set of things, but they're collaborating heavily on open source, and they're co collaborating heavily on the new use cases, right? And so this is what gets you the NAS, right? This is what gets you network as a service, right? This is what gets you all these new things that cut across the core and the edge of the network. And I think it's very important that this collaboration happens. Now, the advantage of, okay, so now if you take a quick detour on why the collaboration accelerated, uh, apart from the business reasons, which, which we are not here to discuss, there's a technology reason. The technology reason is telcos were built very proprietary in the past. With open source, you can modularize it. And then they were built on open stack with VMs, okay? But now, and then the clouds got built on, uh, the new clouds were built on containers and Kubernetes. With telcos then moving to cloud native, and cloud native network functions specifically. Now there is a common horizontal layer of Kubernetes that runs across these layers, right? So it is very easy to get, and this is just a very simple explanation. I'm sure there's a lot of details behind it, but there's a very, that's one of the reasons why these markets have come together. Then there are Kubernetes-based edge deployments that can also push containers all the way down and package them correctly. So there's a lot of synergies between our sister foundation, CNCF, which hosts Kubernetes, and LFN, which kind of holds the networking subsystems. Okay? 
All right. And then finally, the networking community and the board is also focusing on some of the new technologies. And there's about two for now. Uh, there's the metaverse, which mostly is about you know, just our piece of the puzzle, which is the intersection of uh, infrastructure and intersection. You know, we're not focusing on the, on, the, um, on the cool stuff for metaverse, if it is at all cool these days. But independent of that, you know, we just want to make sure that the things on the right Intent based, AI based, you know, security, privacy, all that stuff is taken care of in our infrastructure work. Okay, and then the other one is 6G, very early, uh, but the community starts looking at it probably uh, over the next three years. Okay, so high level then from a trend perspective, right? 2022 was the tipping point. We have seen more deployments of open source last year. Uh, I'm not going to present all the use cases. You can go to the LF Networking website. You know there are case studies from Verizon and Bell and and sort of uh, Deutsche Telekom and Orange and everybody is like who has deployed. Um, and then open source is the basis of these uh, verticals, right? And so collaboration has increased tremendously on that. Okay. So two two three slides on networking, and then I'll hand it over to Telus uh, to talk about more details. LF Networking, we host some of the largest projects. Uh, it was formed by the industry co collaboration uh, seven years, six years ago, right? China Mobile, AT&T came together with Orange and, and, and DT and Bell and others, uh, Verizon, um, Telus joined last year. So it's the combination of the largest of the large who actually want to change where the market's heading, okay? And output of that is almost a commercial ready ecosystem, right? It's not going to be, you can't just deploy open source, right? But you can get it to uh, enough of an integration where vendors can take it through the last mile, okay? So it is across data plane, control plane, analytics, orchestration, the full set across all three domains, right? And we, we are the house, as I said, top three foundations inside LFN. And where it's, being, where it's evolving is it's kind of housing uh, projects and integration for multiple other umbrellas as well. Some stats, I think these were pulled probably three, three months ago, so these must have changed. But it's not trivial to do this in a single vendor system. 182,000 lines of code added weekly. It's a lot of code, okay? I like the deleting part also, because you know if you add and if you don't delete, then it's a mess. So this is good. Um, almost 250 companies contributing. You know, um, the one that bothers me is the 2.1 million email messages, but that's okay. People, we still use email. Um, and then of course uh, multiple projects and, and domains and things like that. Container downloads. Anyway, this, these these stats are available on LFX Insights and things like that. But very active community, um, good growth. So you can see this in commits. You can see this in code contributors. Uh, these are all the elephant projects, right? Uh, that 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 have been put. And then I want to sort of talk about one new project that's a year old, which is very interesting, and that's called Nephew, uh, which was seeded by Google, and it's kind of uh, sitting on top of Kubernetes, right? And then on top is, is ONAP, right? And it is doing like CRDs and things like that right on top of CNFs, okay? So what is, what is happening is the community is coming out with a release, first release this month, I think. And it is looking very interesting in terms of simplifying, simplifying the, uh, the solutions for an all Kubernetes-based solution, right? Remember, five years ago, or 10 years ago, it was all proprietary. Five years ago, it was all OpenStack VM-based. Now it's all Kubernetes, CNFs. There will always be hybrid, but you don't want to pollute the hybrid and the new stuff with the hybrid. So if there are projects and, and other things that can take care of the VNFs, then you put that, and then you take the new one, and then over time, phase it out, right? That's kind of the model most people use, okay? so. On the board, you got pretty much all the top carriers. Um, AT&T was the chair. Um, 
few years, then China Mobile was the chair. I believe we have Deutsche Telekom as the chair this time. Uh, all the vendors are on, on the board. Uh, TELUS is on the board. Ibrahim sits on the board. Uh, Verizon, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then you have a whole bunch of silver members. So that's it. And then all the associate members. So I'm going to wrap up here and say, do get involved. For the, those of you who are not participating in LFN, uh, Pana, what is the email? Since there are 2.1 2, 2 million emails, we can add one more. Is it info at networking? Uh, yeah, info at, uh, uh, sorry, Linux Foundation. Yeah. 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 Okay, so info at lfnetworking.org or ajoshipur at linuxfoundation.org. Yeah, send me an email. But get involved. Get involved is, and this is for the people on, on the, the five, six hundred people that registered and didn't want to travel to lovely Vancouver here. Um, and, and so that's kind of my, my slide deck. Um, we can take questions from here. We can take questions from the web, correct? OK. See, that's the penalty for being online. But. All right, questions? Yes? Good, good. OK, so I'm going to repeat the question because folks won't hear. So what is the vision of bringing everything together? Uh, because there is a lot of projects. So historically, projects can get incubated anywhere in LF, right? That's the fastest path out. Because every sub-foundation has an, has an induction cycle, right? Uh, you know, if you do these things, then you are an incubation project. If you do this thing, you're graduated. If you do these things, then, you know, blah, blah, blah. So when a community wants to get started, they just typically put projects directly under the LF instead of moving it under a foundation, unless they know that they're incubating within a project itself, okay? So that's what has happened, right, where projects have been uh, incubated in, under the LF directly. After the first release, typically, the project TSC and the governance, whatever the governance is, looks at uh, finding a proper home based on the interoperability, based on the community. Most important thing is, where is the community? If the community is here, then they would probably work to get here. If the community is somewhere else, then they'll go there, right? Because you can park anywhere. If there's no community, it doesn't matter. So what we do is, uh, that whole process of kind of aligning. Uh, LF works on that after about a year, work with all the stakeholders, right? So projects like Nephew or Oran Software Community or, or Kamara or Silva or, you know, the, the ones that are relevant to LF networking, um, they will work with their governance and their setup and then see what the best options are, right? So that they can, they can move or they can be inducted and all that, right? That, that's the general process. Um, but keep in mind, the projects still operate autonomously, right? Because TSCs cannot be influenced by the governing board, right? By design, that's how it is set up. Questions, other questions? I mean, you are all LFN, so it's not like uh, something that you don't know. So sorry for the repetition if you have not heard if you've heard me speak about this, but it's always something new comes up all the time. But all right, that's it? Okay, thanks. All right, Sana, you're next? Okay.